And boom! How's it going, guys? My name is Roman Singh Nahal, and this is the best of Evergreen San Jose show. The best of Evergreen San Jose show, we talk real estate, we talk local businesses, and you know we talk about the best of Evergreen San Jose. And in this episode, we are going to hang out with a mentor of mine, uh, someone I look up to, a very close friend, as well as we're going to educate ourselves in order to change because education is the key to the change of perception. Um, our fellow neighbors, our, our fellows of the Islamic uh, faith, are going to be opening up a brand new uh, Evergreen Is Islamic Center that they've been working uh, very hard on and um, it's something that uh, you know I respect and really look forward to. So what we're going to do is two things. Number one, we're going to take a quick tour um, of this mosque, this uh, holy place for our Muslims brothers and sisters. Uh, and then I will sit down uh, with a very close mentor and friend of mine who's written two books. Uh, but most importantly, we're going to talk about philosophies, talk about religion, and talk about life um, and try to knock down any myths and educate, educate, educate. So let's do it. First, we're going to take, let's take a quick tour of uh, the Evergreen Islamic Center. The, a mentor of mine, very close. Um, we'll talk later on tonight, and you guys will see that uploaded. But we want to show you the Evergreen Mosque. Uh, a lot of community members have been working very hard. I'm very excited. And the whole point is Saturday. Right on the Saturday, um, I'll, I'll put up that flyer. I put it up already. Uh, everybody is welcome. Yes, and, uh, and the goal is, as we're going to do now, is just educate. Except, except because we are serving lunch, give us an actual attention. Yes, yes, that would be that would be great. But uh, here we are. I'm going to just be the uh, eye in the sky and uh, follow you around. So. Okay, so this is really all there is to a mosque. It's a open prayer area, um, pointing towards Kaaba. Um, the uh, these are rows, we basically stand on these rows facing in the same direction. What is, what is Kaaba? Cause you... Kaaba is the, the holy site in uh, Mecca. Mm. Uh, so all mosques or all people standing up in prayer point towards the face of the Kaaba. And, uh, and how does one designate? Is it certain uh, point towards the sun? Is it east? How do we know exactly where? Uh, Mecca is, which is Holy Pilgrimage. Well, you basically so, know the coordinates, so you uh, do the so, yeah. yeah, so you do the map. Yeah. Interesting. Um, what are uh, these here? Um, those are time zones? Yes, no, those are, we, there's a five times prayer. Mm, got um, daily five times, and those are the times that those prayers are. Um, Two of them, the first one and the last one, depend upon sunrise and sunset. Um, so they may change every 30 days or so. The other ones are rather static. And w w what do these, for people, you know, uh, in the, s the simplest terms, which again we'll talk about tonight, I'm looking forward to that. Um, what, what are the significance we got? This is telling years, us that our next congregation here is going to be at 6.15. Okay. Then at 7:50, then at 9:15. Right. So, as a religion, we have 10 gurus uh, and so forth. So, the significance of, of five is there any uh, qu quantitative significance of one out of ten times a day? Why why five? Uh, well, it's it's supposedly an optimum number. Uh, ten is excessive. Less mm -hmm. than five is um, not frequent enough. Oh, uh, that it. So that's uh, something to aim for. Something. That's that's something that was given to the prophet. Okay. And uh, wonderful, wonderful. Look at these. Committee picked all these. That is beautiful. Yes. Gosh, and then Obviously, the central point of a masjid is the dome, which you are familiar with too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and uh, someone picked up the chandelier for the dome. It's beautiful. It's very nice. So, um, for anybody coming here Saturday, and we can keep on walking out of this beautiful view. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody coming here Saturday, they know that all um, are welcome. Uh, if I'm a woman like 
uh, friend of the bank was talking about today. Or is there any, uh, we obviously we want to be uh, respectful and we want to learn, is there any protocols as, you know, well, the there's many for us too, right? The protocol is modest uh, dress, okay. modest attire. Okay. Um, then it's time for prayers. Uh, women and men segregate. Okay. Um, actually, in this hall, there is segregation. Okay. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, one maintains uh, silence and... Shoes off. Shoes always off, yes. Uh, we usually have shoes off. Use restroom, wash your hands. F- for us, it's... Um, you know, uh, it's very similar yeah. to the Gurdwara. Right. Yes. That, that's what's so, so wonderful. Yes. Uh, and there's a washing area separately for women and a washing area for men on the other side. Yes, uh, that, that little basketball court thing. Yeah. In the back side. Right. Yes. For the future NBA. You can, you can come and do some <laughs> coaching there. Oh, don't, don't give me permission. I'm going to break your rim again <laughs> if you get those kids. Uh, should we have to say anything? Yeah, well, this is... Okay. The other two levels are incomplete, Okay. but the one below it is storage and the one below that is a kitchen, a future kitchen okay. for a future community center. Wonderful. And, and for uh, eating I- as well? Or well, eating event? would be actually in the community center. Okay, okay. So we had some controversy with that. It sounds genius. Want to open a community center, but obviously it's not exactly the right thing to have weddings and so forth and parties and dancing near a religious yes. institution, right? But this would be more for just eating after the congregation, right? Correct. Um, well, I mean, people can they still have their occasions, but show sanctity to the place. Absolutely. And like you mentioned, even in most places, um, silence is key. Obviously, you don't want to be. Uh, Boisterous. Um, I guess we'll save most of the knowledge uh, for tonight. Um, I want to give a shout out to this. So, the, so oh, the, there's the a game really important plan. event, which is this one here. Okay. Um, a professor from Evergreen College is going to bring his telescope and we'll do some stargazing. Nice. This is on Friday. So, we invite, invited all the immediate neighbors, but anyone is welcome. Wonderful. Wonderful. And oh, here we go. What oh, these the board member responsibilities? Yeah, that's um, basically so, our notice board. And um, so back to Saturday for those of you who don't know. So there, it's going to be kind of a tour of the mosque, a simple uh, Islam 101, a Q and A, um, and we talk about the spiritual journey. Those type of things we can talk about uh, in, in a few hours. Um, looking forward to by finally sitting down. Um, but this is the Evergreen Islam Centers. Is Saturday going to be the first kind of big event huh, for you guys? No, we've had people, we have open homes before. We're just doing it on a regular basis. Okay, so that's wonderful. That's Where would you say you guys are completion-wise? It's like, it's well, like, it's like the Golden Gate Bridge, right? It's still with a work in progress. Yes, we worked on a temporary opportunity for the prayer room. And that's where the urgency was. The rest will go on as a fun summer. And in this, of course, how insanely blessed are we? What you do want to see in Sahih? To be in the bay. Pertinent is to see the old mosque. Oh, yes, sir. Sure. So, what we're looking at here is kind of every church, every Gurdha has their humble beginnings, right? I remember with our San Jose Sea Temple, we were right down there on Quimby uh, in something similar to this. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. I got uh, Go ahead. Yes, please keep going. So th- take our shoes off. Yep. Yep. So this is the the older and original. It was called Safe Islamic Association at the time. Yeah. The name hasn't changed. Okay. Oh, this is the a prototype. Well, this served us well for thirty years, so thirty-five years. Yeah. Take our shoes off. Uh, this to our right was kind no, of... No, that was just an th- office area. Oh, okay. It's been used for storage, but this was our main Got it. prayer facility for the last, actually, 35 years. Wow. wow. This was a three-bedroom house. Okay. Um, I'm, the, I'm the beginning. So this is for anybody um, 
who may be able to face that move from out of town, just to know just the general rules that if you come in here and say it's, you know, you can come in on your own time, right? Because yes. it's very five times a day just to know that, um, kind of just the general protocols, right? <laughs> to make yeah. sure it's clear, the general upkeep. This is kind of a cool depiction for anybody. Uh, oh, I love the pitch. Chatter. <laughs> we need it all. Uh, uh, these are kind of stages. Wow, that one's really cool to look at. November 2012. Um, so much work goes into this, and that's really cool what everyone's doing. You know, nobody wants to be a part of it during the process, but everybody wants to be part of the results. Okay? Right? No, people in the community has come through. They've done the, the, okay. the flying colors. I, I think yeah. everyone has put in their fair share. Well said. Yeah. But uh, what I've seen the diligence, the hard work of this. But I think what will happen is that now that it's done, we should probably see a boost. Um, yep. So, but And that's the goal at the end yes, of the day. Yes, uh, doing everyone has done their fair share. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, the TVs, any plans well, the to run prayers across or translations? No, no, no. These were these are boxes from the TVs, uh, uh, notice boards that were mounted in the new the new one, oh, correct? Yeah. Oh, that was so right. It's just stuff to be recycled. Uh, ask a question. This, uh, I shouldn't be pointing, uh, is just a general... This is a Quranic uh, surah right here, a Quranic, a set of Quranic verses, handmade. And uh, that's a list of divine attributes, or you can also say divine names for the one God. So you see Al Kafid. So I mean, we, we do absolutely do the same thing. You know, my sister Simon's name has a significant meaning when choosing names. Right? Roman is probably the only. I'm the the widest. Go go down there. Everybody else got a cool. Yeah. <laughs> so this is similar. to Something parents yes. could use. Well, this is. These are the divine attributes. For example, the first one is Al Rahman, which means the most beautiful. God one. is the fount of mercy. The second one is Al Rahim, which means. Uh, he is he is uh, merciful. He's merciful to his creatures. The third one is Al Malik, which means he's the sovereign. So they're ninety nine. Like yeah, thank you. Sir. Yeah, well, uh, in, a, in in a man, uh, Malik means different than it. This is Al Malik. This is definitive. So it is the Malik, so the sovereign. Al Jalil, the sublime one. I like yes. that. Uh, the great one, Al Azim. Beautiful. Okay, so we're <coughs> yes, we're done with our, our our fun one. Okay, I'm a, you know I'm asking two questions. Last one. This is this is uh the uh, what you spoke this of. This is the Grand Mosque in Medina. Medina. That's so right. That's, I remember learning a world history. Uh, this so is at the same site where the Prophet's first mosque in Medina was, which is right here, and then this grew around it. A beautiful of a picture is that so when you, we spoke of the coordinates earlier and when you line up uh, when you walk into the mosque the coordinates will be lined up to this well no that's yeah. that's in Mecca this oh, is okay, Medina okay, okay. what is the difference uh, two different cities okay yeah. two different cities but major holy cities major holy cities uh, but the Kaaba is uh, in Mecca okay and I'm sure both and of that's the mu Muslims believe that's the place where Abraham built the first house of God. Hmm. I was brushing up on your book. We'll talk about that. We'll save that for tonight. Okay. Uh, so thank you so much, Uncle, for uh, those of you are watching. Sorry we kept it so short. We're going to have... Uh, oh, hey, Jane. I didn't get to say hello to everybody as we're talking. Uh, we'll have a, another talk soon, a sit-down, where we kind of break down more of a Q&A &A and, and learn together. Thank you guys for joining. Awesome. So I'm back. I'm, we're at an undisclosed location. I'm here with uh, Mr. Malik. And what uh, I wanted to do is just kind of talk as long one-on-one. -on -one. Well, first off, let me, say, let me say my views are my own. Uncle's views are his own. Our, our opinions don't represent any type of organizations. But I feel it's so important to share these things. And uh, you have no idea how intelligent this man is. You're going to uh, learn slowly here. But... Um, I think it's important, at least for me, even as a Sikh, that it's very important that, you know, we learn about all 
religions, right? Not just our own. We can spend our entire lives doing that, and you'll slowly see that um, I'll begin to to check out others. But first off, Mr. Malik, uh, he wrote a few books. He wrote two books, but I recommend for those who are interested. Maybe you could talk about this one. When was how long ago was this one? Well. I'm bad with dates, I'd imagine, <laughs> eight years ago, seven years ago, maybe. He's too humble. He's, he's super... Uh, no, I'm, I'm very bad with dates. All I remember is that is my first book. Okay. And then, and then there was the second, but uh, you'd like to discuss the first. But let's first think about uh, somebody who has no idea. Like Jane is just joining us. She's uh, at the gym there at Evergreen Village Square. Um, I want to let... You talk of you know, what's your personal version of, of Islam Islam 101? Because a lot of times the only outlet we have is mainstream media from U.S. You know, world history on top of my head. I, I was familiar with uh, Muhammad um, as the prophet. I was familiar with the pilgrimage to Medina, but, but that was it. And there's so much more, so much more intricacies uh, to it. Um, what, are, what are kind of well, it, I think it's important to repeat that these are my own personal views. Sure. Um, to me, the purpose of any faith is to make us better human beings and for us to understand that there is more to life than the materiality um, that is around us. Um, the basic tenet of Islam is that there is only one God and we are all his creatures. Once you and ours, accept, sorry, I'm going to cut you off. Our, and ours, like there's a similar song, so that means monotheistic, right? It, it means monotheistic. Um, it, it means, but more importantly, it means that we are all equal. Um, the, the moment you talk of a single creator, you talk of the multiplicity in creation is from the same source, from the same origin. So that is where we get our equality. That is where our concept of justice and, and fairness and, and um, good behavior, they all emanate from the fact that we are all creatures of the same God. So that is the basic uh, the base, the principle pyramid. that there is no other God but one God. Okay. The, the, the second part is that we are all accountable for our actions. Um, the good that we do, um, the good that we intend, the good work that we end up getting done, these accrue to us. Um, anything that has got a bad motive or a bad intention, ends up being a bad action, mm -hmm. we are accountable for that. Mm -hmm. um, Your version of karma. And before that, Christian's version of Ten Commandments. Well, it's, right? the, it's the Christian or the Jewish version of, of hell and heaven. Right. Um, heaven is basically being, um, is, is coming face to face with the good that you've accrued and more. And hell is the place where you are accountable for all your ill intentions and your ill deeds. Oh. Um, now, this is the essence of faith. To, to get to that point where, where you have to remind yourself um, that this life is only a means, it's only a test. The essence is, afterlife. I mean, there's the essence, there is an afterlife. Mm -hmm. So to be reminded of all of that, to not get carried away Mm -hmm. or swayed away by what uh, some Eastern religions call Maya or materiality right. Right. Uh, is your practice of religion, is your practice of faith. Right. Um, so central to our faith is the book, the Quran. Um, it, is, it is, we consider as Muslims as the word of God, um, just as we recognize that there were other spiritual or divine texts uh, the text given to um, to Moses, the speech, the divine speech given to Jesus. Um, these are all divine scriptures. And we also acknowledge that there are many scriptures that are divine 
which we don't know about, which mm -hmm. we have not been informed of, which mm -hmm. basically means that one should be respectful mm -hmm. um, and um, I mean, more than tolerant. Well, more than tolerant. Mm -hmm. uh, be respectful of what anyone claims to be his or her scripture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I was. If you line five people up, you whisper the same story in their ear. At the very end, it might be a completely different story. I think that's the hard part uh, with the religions: is as it's passed down, how do we know what is truth uh, or, or not? Uh, you know, Bibles can be amended, so forth. Uh, but that's why it was so important for for Sikhs for the well, and the Holy Quran to be written down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it is. It, I must first recognize that I have my own faith, and the way I feel about my own faith, you feel mm -hmm. the same about yours, if not stronger. Similarly, a Christian or a Hindu. Um, but from my perspective, um, as a Muslim. I take, um, I take, uh, I, I recognize the fact. First of all, it's it's a matter of faith that uh, that the Quran is unaltered. Now, why? How do I reconcile that to myself? I mean, to me, there's no point getting that point across to someone else mm -hmm. because it's about my faith. But the way I reconcile it to myself mm -hmm. is that. The Quran was passed on orally. Mm -hmm. um, it has been memorized through the ages. Mm -hmm. And in fact, even in this evergreen community, mm -hmm. you'll probably find a good 30, 40, 50 people who have memorized the Quran by heart. So before there was a text, before there was a written book, there was a memorized text. Mm -hmm. and, and who, you know, according to history and that's tough is uh, someone orally recited the first time when it was uh, written down in our world the uh, tenth guru Guru Bhavad Singh finally said okay we need to write this down yes. uh, it was being ripped up torn up so forth uh, it is safe to say that even with him reciting it it, it cannot be fathomed as 100% accurate and I'm sure he did it his best in that way but as time gets uh, passed down I think that's uh, the tough thing for a religion. Um, I wanted to kind of, again, think about others who don't know much. For somebody who, who doesn't know, and I, I don't know anything to, to be completely honest, but it's so important, so cool that we're doing this, because again, we have to be open, have to be transparent about things, and I believe that education, right, is the key to change of perception. Um, so let's, let's start off with, this is more cultural, or maybe not, but ma male and females, um, uh, we'll see uh, females uh, wearing the uh, hijab. Oh, there's this female Taekwondo champion with a hijab. She's amazing. Uh, check her out. But uh, significance, I don't know what I thought of her, significance in religion or culture? And that's that, that's an interesting question because Punjabi culture, yes. <laughs> Sikhism, two completely different things. As a first generation kid, I would always see what is preached and see what is done within culture. And and that's life, that's the fine line, right? That's why we yeah. have faith to try to bring, none of us are perfect. Um, but let's start with women first, for somebody who has zero well, knowledge. Hijab, is, it's a significant um, the The important thing is for us to dress modestly. Uh, that applies both for men and women. Um, now, I'm not an expert at this, but I can tell you from my own experience right. that a lot of this is cultural. In fact, if you see a Punjabi Sikh woman and a Punjabi Muslim woman, from their dress, you know, you cannot tell the difference. Yeah. They wear the same clothes, the same scarf. So, so that is their expression of modesty. Um, Culture. And the irony is someone was in fact, there was a program on, on PBS, I believe, about the hijab. And someone showed a picture of the crowds that lined up for uh, Jamal Abdul Nasser's burial in Egypt. Mm -hmm. He was a very popular Egyptian leader. And the, his, that entire route was lined on both sides with people. And as the 
camera spanned the people, they didn't find a single hijab. So this was back, I believe, in the 1960s. Mm -hmm. um, I have noticed the same thing in the country of my origin. There are more people wearing the hijab. Uh, same thing in the U.S. I think it's it is probably an expre a newfound expression mm -hmm. of their pride as, in their faith. As would be the turban, uh, you know, to to males. Correct. Right. Correct. So it is it is a way of them saying I'm a Muslim woman and I'm proud of it. The largest population of Muslim faith. Uncle pop quiz. Uh, what, what country? That's Indonesia. <laughs> The first guy who's gotten that right. I always uh, say that, but naturally people, cause I think it's important because perspective, most people are going to say, uh, what, Saudi uh, Arabia or something? But my point of that is to understand that, you know, we have that perspective in our mind, but not a, a big picture understanding of um, how large this vision is. And when you incorporate that with culture, depending on, you know, where you're at, uh, those are going to get blended in. Indonesians are going to have their Indonesian culture. That has nothing to do with Islam, right? So my point is everyone else's own, I guess, perspective of their faith um, is always going to be uh, slightly different. I think in our world, uh, you throw politics into the mix, money into the mix. In any religion, uh, that's where, unfortunately, where, where humans things get kind of blurry in that way, you know? Um, but. Well, any, any religion has got its various components. First of all, every religion, every major religion has a spectrum of culture, a spectrum of different countries. Um, then there is a political component uh, to every religion. Um, I wish it wasn't so. We're just, but, we're just monkeys. But, yes, there's, but there's politics there's, going on in the jungle right now. <laughs> <laughs> It's a monkey, so I'm sorry. So, um, um, no, I, I just wanted to say yes. that, that, uh, that there is no monolith. Um, and even, see, the basic fact is that God is both personal and God is also universal. So he's both personal and universal. Mm. No two human beings can have an identical concept of God. It's an intimate relationship with Him. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is our intimacy with God. On the other hand, I have to recognize that God is universal. So I'm not any more special to God than you are, right. and vice versa. I think your key and, with that is the self. The self. It's between myself, Roman, and God, and having that faith. And for people who may, may not have adopted a religion, uh, that faith can simply be in themselves, that the voice in their head, whoever we look to. One of my coaches would always say in priorities, uh, Roman, it's faith first, then family, then business, and academics, and that's one, right? Uh, more nice to business, but he said in the, that faith could be in God or it can be in anyone in yourself. But that is the only thing that comes before family. And I think, what do you think as humans, as time progressed, being where we're from in our environment, we're kind of pointed to towards some type of sanctity, right? To, to, to look into, and depending on where you were, uh, that would end up being Islam or um, so, uh, so forth. Uh, well, I mean, the, the, the truth is most of us have, our, have espoused our religion as part of the legacy we inherit. Um, there's a few of us who are on a quest and who actually land up, end up choosing a religion. Uh, so, so we should also be conscious. Or even changing a religion, right? Changing, yes. Choo yes, changing choosing and changing, yes. Um, if, if there's anything that, you know, anybody coming out there Saturday, you could watch our, our last talk to know. I think it's so wonderful that we did this uh, and we're transparent uh, about it. Um, for those of you who don't know, and we don't have, you know, get into too much history, but the divide in, in 19, uh, the 40s, 47, the partition. Uh, well, but before that, uh, if we take push that aside for a second, just uh, t talk about you. Were you, were you born and raised here? Where were you? No, no, I was, I was born and raised in, in Pakistan. I'm a post-partition. Uh, wow. 
was born in 1952, so five years after the partition. Okay. But, uh, um, I mean, I've read enough about it to know how eventful it was. Yes. How eventful, how traumatic it was. Yes. Um, but yes, coming once we come to the U.S., we we realize the commonality of our culture in terms of what we eat, in terms of how we dress, in terms of how we treat our elders, in terms of how we treat our family, and so on. Um, yeah, that's very cool. So uh, I know their look is watching. The look saying my dad during the wedding singer days, but I remember uh, that's the beautiful thing is music. It had no religion, and many of the singers that uh, respected my dad and always uh, had came over saying were uh, uh, Muslim singers. But what are they singing? And they're singing Punjabi, same language, right? Uh, and oh gosh, the gentleman that everyone would be playing it starts to the end, uh, Nasrat, Nasrat, Nasrat Fateh Ali. Fateh Ali, check him out if you never have. But um, you know. Technically, a Muslim. And real quick, one I want to do a horrible job explaining this, but essentially, uh, the British leave around 1947. Um, the state of Punjab gets split uh, in half. Majority. What is created is Pakistan, uh, which at one point was India. There's people out there, uncle, that still don't know that, right? And it's a sensitive subject uh, for for us. But the biggest thing we were kind of divided by was religion, where. Uh, majority of, of Muslims, you know, stayed in India too, but went to Pakistan, vice versa. Uh, Lahore, for example, was a part of Punjab and Amritsar mm -hmm. uh, that came over, but a very, uh, very, very tra troubling time, but it's important we talk and know our, our history um, so we can learn from it, right? We see all these things going on and forget about religion. Sometimes we're even divided by the pigmentation of our skin like you see these days. I don't even turn on uh, the television uh, anymore. So that's why, um, although it can be awkward or nobody wants to talk about it, first of all, you know me, I don't know what awkward is, I don't have a filter, unfortunately, but I think looking back, we'll be so happy that we talk openly about these because we realize that he puts on pants just like I do, right? He bleeds blood just like I do. There's no difference, but when you look at MLK's days, the only way to make those black and white kids get along again, which sounded like the worst thing to do, is to force them to go to high school together, force them to bunk with each other, and slowly realize that, hey, there is, there, there is no difference here in religion, not, but uh, th that's not the best analogy, because before uh, 47, um, everyone was great. Everyone, there was a time, would you ag agree that? I think, I think one of the key things is for us right. to learn to celebrate our diversity. Yes. Also. What makes us special and unique is who we thing. are as, as individuals. I mean, I wouldn't want to live in the world, in a world where everyone was like me. Mm -hmm. Hell, I wouldn't last half an hour. If you last on my conductors. So what makes this world a beautiful place is its diversity. Um, and everyone has got something to teach another person. 100%. 100%. Uh, that's so important. Uh, if you could talk about anyone who does uh, go through and read the book, it's a tough subject. You, you, you go, you give your, your opinions on really the intricacies of breaking down the Quran from your perspective. Uh, and I love poetry, I love, I love so forth. What was the hardest thing and advice to anyone who's writing a book, even if it's not about uh, religion? What was the toughest for you, putting pen to paper? I hear it's well, I, I always wanted to do that. I, uh, um, I, I was in semiconductors. I uh, wrote a, a set of documentation for a piece of software that I developed. You was tired of writing engineering white papers? Yes, which was a thousand <laughs> pages. And I said, look, oh. when I leave my office, the first thing someone will do is toss those thousand pages out. All so those I hours. said, what is it that I can write that someone that I would consider to be my legacy? starting with my children. And when I wrote this book, I had my children in my mind. Mm -hmm. uh, this is what I wanted to leave for them, and it became a, a study and a quest for me. The book was only a byproduct of this quest. So once, once you're focusing on a journey, um, the book 
is inevitable. I mean, the book uh, it writes itself. The flows through. Yes, it writes itself. And, and that was essentially, you know, when you had explained to your, your daughters, let me put it in a nutshell for you guys. Here's my thoughts on it. its significance, its meaning, which gives it uh, value. And the, the second, that builds its base, the second follow-up was just specifically, and I promised I wouldn't talk about the second book, but uh, on the the, ni- the 19th chapter? The 18th chapter. 18th. I think I was going to screw that up. Specifically of... Uh, in the Quran, but talking uh, about Abraham and departing seas metaphorically. That, that, if you yes, it is. Well, the, it's mm-hmm. it's it's a story. One of the stories in that chapter is about Moses, who says that I will not rest until I get to the place where two seas meet. Um, now, the concept of the meeting of two seas is a very mystical concept. Um, You can think of uh, the meeting of the inner and the outer. You can think of the meeting of the manifested reality and the hidden reality. You can think of the meeting of the temporal um, and the eternal. Um, So it is at this nexus where he finds a mystical servant of God called Khidr and together they have a journey Um, and uh, this journey has got uh, three incidents in it. Each one of these incidents basically opens up uh, or gives you or invites you, gives you license to reflect um, in in the mystical aspects or the mystical lessons from those incidents. Um, so that is one of the stories. And that is why, in, in your opinion, it is one of the most uh, spirit, spiritual cha- chapters. Yes, it is, it is one of the most uh, uh, mystical, mystically rich chapters of, um, in my understanding. Right, right. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. That's important to say because we'll look at Bible verses and we can translate that paragraph to mean what it means to us and another could debate of what it means, what it means to you in, in a Christian Bible, but at the end of the day, it's what you can take take from it, and the whole goal is to get you thinking, to, to yeah, try to make yeah, you understand. To, to me, I think it's important to say. Right? Yeah, to me, uh, there's no right getting, answer. To me, getting attached to your scripture mm-hmm. is like taking a jump in the sea. Uh, my experience is going to be different than yours, so um, all you can do is share our experiences, and that's what I'm doing. And what, what is the goal? The goal is not a particular answer, but the goal is to get you to reflect with yourself. Absolutely. Right? The, goal, People the goal is to look inside of yourself and find another sea mm-hmm. uh, and tap into that sea mm-hmm. and reconcile it with our uh, reality with the small R. That's wonderful. Did you ever, so Guru Nanak was the first guru that created our religion, which is actually fairly late. I mean, compared to your religion, the 1500s. And I think it's so cool to me that he talks about his uh, pilgrimage. Um, and he had two people to his right and left. I'm probably going to get this incorrect. But one of them was Muslim. And I think there's a few Gurdwara that are still in, in Pakistan. Yeah, there, there are. Right? I mean, I've been to the Hassan Abdal Gurdwara myself. Um, it's called the Panja Sahib. Okay. I, I, I think we, we have a... So, um, I, I went there as a student for a tour. In fact, I've been there twice. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, I kind of think in terms of value for others, and but when people do have myths, when do people do uh, it, that? All comes from from ignorance or lack of knowledge or tolerance. Um, what do you think that even somebody if we can get off topic? But somebody. Um, that you're seeing in Virginia, that that's going on right now, that's a hot topic. I don't like to think about that 24/7, but I, I like to think about what can you attribute to that in your uh, humble opinion. It aside, I think education is number one, but second, obviously, it has to be environment, right? It has to be parenting. It has to be if you're raised to only know X, you think X is normal. You don't even know that things are not. Um, well, I just wanted to get your thoughts on that, which you know, has nothing to do with, uh, with Islam, but just as, us as humans, right? 
um, the which which particular episode um, are you talking so about? So when you, when, when the you the with the, the shot of smell? Oh yeah, the shot of smell. Yes, yes. Yeah. But just people in general. Uh, how can people, right? To try to put in perspective, what makes people think the way they think? Well, in your opinion, I think I think what has happened, and the irony is we are on what you call this the social media. Yeah. We have substance, we have lost substance, and we navigate ourselves through cliches and slogans. Uh, we are so well connected, we've got access to so much knowledge, but we are tuned to the 143 odd characters that give us our daily ration. Um, Twitter reference, yeah. So, okay. so, you know, there's a lot of fake news mm -hmm. all around us. Um, whether I'm selling you a used car or mm -hmm. I'm selling you a magical portion of something, mm -hmm. um, there's, there's a lot of uh, fake news that has entered into our lives because we have stopped looking for the substance and the essence. Right. Um, you know, so... Absolutely. I, 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 I would just hope that that Charlottesville is basically the swinging of the pendulum on one side. I hope that mm -hmm. that the pendulum will swing back. And, and it could be a much smaller of a majority than it is to us, but some of the mainstream channels, they, anything that involves fear, I feel that they pump it up and give it a, a bigger name. But you're absolutely right. I think that's why it's so important. What do we allow? What do we choose? what source of information you could watch something like this on your drive for an hour or you're listening to everything what do you let in right on your daily basis and for that well, point i think is, we're in control of that yeah. I, I think that's very important to be mindful which is why i literally walk in my mom's room and turn off the local news at night and but that's just her ritual but what, she, what we don't understand is in our subconscious we're kind of almost being right yeah, we're I mean, manipulated by something. It, it, instead of being fed the news being fed to us, we should really seek our own, we should do our own study, we should seek our own um, truth, we should seek, uh, we should use our own rationality. Be objective. Uh, the, the world is not black and white, the world is gray. Mm -hmm. in, my, uh, in my opinion, um, everyone has got something redeeming about him and everyone has got some vulnerability or some weak point about him. But uh, um, the the news or or Twitter or whatever they try to you know uh, paint everything in just black and white. white. That's not yeah. how life is. But see, I talk I talked about this a lot. Is there's two sides to every story, and then there's the truth. But how can we teach kids? Or when did I it start hitting me to be actually be objective and not be able to be manipulate or brainwash, but have the humbleness to say that, okay, I'm hearing what I'm hearing, but I'm going to assume that there's two sides to every story, and then there's a middle, there's a gray area, there's the truth, and... Um, well, to me, yeah, to me, there's a silver lining. I, mean, we, I think it's understanding of yourself. Yeah, we've got a commander-in-chief right now who I don't believe. Uh -oh. uh, you brought him up. Uh -oh. So, uh, I think, um, as, as Americans, we will be looking for alternatives. Yeah. Uh, um, I mean, um, I think parenting has become more challenging. We've got to pass mm -hmm. on um, the, the truth to our children and to our, in my case, to our grandchildren. Mm -hmm. um, make them, make so them see things that. as they ought to be, not as they are projected. Right. So see the millennials, and to confirm, if you're born 1994 after your a millennial, but Simon Sinek, I'll send you this after, he was talking uh, about um, how, how bad it is. He didn't say so, social media was bad, but I mean socially um, that we kind of almost get a uh, hit of dopamine when we see that and like, or we start to ask ourselves, right? Uh, did I do something wrong? Why aren't people liking this post, right? Should, should, and what he was saying was this is very detrimental to their health. 
their health because I, I, alcohol has age restrictions, you know, certain other things have age restrictions, but in his opinion, why, uh, and they release dopamine in the brain, why don't uh, social media, how come those don't have any regulations to 18 over? But you have to hear him talk. I didn't do him ju justice, but his point was, you know, that it, it's kind of causing increased rates of, of depression and so forth, but not that social media is so bad, it's the millennials of, and the parenting of how we're growing up uh, with technology and dealing with it in the right ways that there's nothing wrong with alcohol, but too much alcohol and you die, right? Uh, that there has to be kind of uh, a balance, uh, says the guy who's doing nothing with social media all day, but uh, I thought that was very interesting, so I'm saying it did it way more justice, but I thought of that when you brought up parenting, uh, because for parents it's gonna be um, a lot tougher, and when things like Charlottesville come up, um, how to have those discussions and how to, uh, you know, teach your child, child to be objective, be neutral, yeah. not be well, influenced by those. See, things. I mean, social media is a is a powerful, powerful tool. I mean, look what Trump did with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think political scientists will study this for the next twenty years. How did a man on such a low budget? Good and bad things. So, yeah, but 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 the thing is, right. you cannot have any meaningful discourse on social media. Mm -hmm. No, I think the interesting thing with uh, him, those MBK studies written, is I call it the Miley Cyrus effect. Uh, they say that sometimes even bad publicity is good publicity. And the thing is, we were doing nothing but talking bad about him during the election, but the thing we need to remember is we're still talking about him. Right? And that's where the uh, kind of weird thing was, where he still ended up getting... Um, uh, elected and that, and that goes for others uh, as well. But uh, we're, we're getting into politics is the one thing that we didn't want to get into. I want to thank uh, uh, Uncle. I know you got to run. Um, well, then I think we probably captured <laughs> our well, we, well, audience we, as long as we could, anyways. So. No, yeah, you never, you never know. <laughs> one man's garbage is another man's treasure, <laughs> right? Uh, but that that was the key here. And and, and here's the thing. Again, I plan to uh, visit. Uh, a, a rabbi coming up. I plan to uh, probably didn't even know that there was a Buddhist temple in the Evergreen area until it captured my mind. And um, I think it, it's important to share this, give, give, give uh, value to you guys. And what it does, even if I never step foot in a, a Jewish temple again, um, I have, I'm not going to assume, I have a, a perception. I understand why certain things are done. And what that does is it has me build respect and tolerance for that. That if somebody next to me says, oh, they're doing this and this because of this, I would say, no, actually the meaning of this is etc. It's a meaningful thing that they do and this is why they pray at certain times a day and it's part of their roots. How else would I be able to talk like that if I don't attempt to educate myself, right? And that's one of the journeys upon many. So I want to thank um, Oh, Uncle Malik, you're taking the time. If his daughters see this, shout out to them. Now you now you know. Did you ever tell them that when you wrote the book, this is what you wanted to leave behind, kind of, for them? Well, if I didn't vote, I, I, would, I, I would imagine so. Yeah. Probably multiple times. So my, my dad's songs, the last thing I'll say is the same thing. You know, he may not uh, have thought of it, but it kind of uh, hit me, God forbid, anything ever happened to him, but I realized one thing that will be left behind eternally as the temptations and stand by me etc it's ageless is our writings our our songs and and which makes cool documentation like this uh, you probably hate me now uncle but later on it's gonna be really cool to watch this and see how much we've grown as individuals you know 10 years from now 15 years from now uh, in these talks so so i'm grateful for that anything you want to say about else? okay saturday saturday uh come out uh, Ruby and Tali, Evergreen Islamic Center. Um, I encourage all of you guys to come out. It's going to be an open house. Um, yeah, and meet your, your neighbors, get to know them. Oh, but, but, but remember, they're serving food. So, oh, yes. So, time. somehow you should give them an accurate headcount. You don't want to end up getting too uh, many. Well, not being able to. <laughs> I'll send uh, over salads from somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, wonderful. Uh, well, thank you guys again. Until uh, next time, and big thank you to uh, to Uncle G for joining us. G means sir, okay? <laughs>